You know, it's like, oh, oh, how come? Like, and I know the industry's like, oh shit, this is a great way to see black women all in one place. But why, why didn't we fucking think it is? You know, because y'all weren't thinking of us. So I provide, I'm providing an opportunity for black women to be seen by industry and for us to have support, for us to have an opportunity to network and bond and just continue to build an infrastructure. The Black Women in Comedy Laugh Fest is a five-day comedy festival that was born out of rage after decades of being left out, unseen, and overlooked in the industry. Comedian Joanna Briley decided it was time for Black comedians to have something of their own. Now in its fourth year, the Black Women in Comedy Laugh Fest has partnered with The Chris David Show to bring you exclusive interviews with featured comedians performing in the festival. Our next guest just celebrated her ninth anniversary in stand-up. And while she may have 99 problems, telling jokes ain't one. Let's give a warm Chris David show welcome to Black Women in Comedy Laugh Fest featured comedian, Ms. Domo Jones. Thank you for pulling up to the Chris oh, David show. Thank you show. for having me. I really appreciate it. Anytime, anytime. Like, I, I had to. I've seen you. You're dope. Like, I've seen your bit and... Thank you. Yes, I was <laughs> thoroughly entertained, and we're going to get to that a little bit later because there was something that you said that thoroughly entertained me, and yeah, I can relate. So, how in the world did you get a name like Domo? Like, I love that name, by the way, but how did you get that name? Well, it's actually common. It's just short for Dominique. It's a lot of Dominiques out there. They either go by Dom or Domo, but right, even right. when I tell people it's Domo, they still drop the O and call me Dom, and it's like, but I just told you it's Domo. Why are you dropping So it's o? not Domo, it's Domo. Domo, yeah, I pronounce it D D A, but I spell it D-O. Now, all this time, I was thinking it was Domo. I don't know where I got that I don't, from. A lot of people, a lot of people say different things so it's just like all right as long as they got the concept of it i'm cool cool i'm glad we established that this is when they butcher it how do they butcher that name bro i just call me domino's like domino's pizza see y'all know i know (laughs) it was like bro i didn't even say that many syllables exactly (laughs) y'all know i didn't say that many syllables though they should (laughs) That's too much. How did, <laughs> look, how did you get started in comedy? How did you get your start? Yeah, honestly, when I used to work at Nike in Long Island, uh, one of my coworkers actually put it in my head because he was at home watching stand up. And then he came back to work and he was like, yo, I was thinking about you and I could see you on stage acting a fool. And then from there, I just like went home, did my research and got on stage back in like 2014. And then now, we started again in 2015. I, I see. You, you, now, you're, an, you're a graduate of the illustrious Philadelphia uh, Comedy College. Shout out to yeah. Chief from Up the Ray. Block and to Ray, <laughs> Miss Andrea Oldham down there in Philly. Um, what was that experience like? Yo, it was great. I was already, like, on a path of understanding how to do my joke structures and the punchlines and all of that. So what that college did for me was just like really basically verify that I am doing this correctly, you know? So it kind of like really helped me out and it um it leveled me up in a sense too. So, cause I'm a little bit more, I, I write more and I'm a little bit more creative when it comes to like my punches and stuff like that. So it's like, it was amazing. I mean, I'm glad I did it. I would recommend anybody to do it if they got the money. <laughs> Let's go back a bit. When did you know you were funny? Um, I'm not going to say no, I was funny, but just always cutting jokes and just always wanting not to like be sad and just find the humor in something so I can laugh and just help cheer up my spirit, you know? Because like, I remember thinking about that and it's just like, I don't, I feel like I probably was always funny, but never looked at it as a stand-up comedian point of view, like, it was just, this is this everyday life. You want to laugh and not be crying. So what's the opposite? You want to laugh, you know? You want to have a good time. You want to cut jokes and just enjoy this life that we have. Exactly. 
Brooklyn. Where are you from? Where are you from? What what part of Brooklyn? <laughs> best Island. Best Island. Best Listen. Island. <laughs> shout out to Brooklyn. Shout out to Bed Stuy. I'm gonna tell you, like I, I I tell these these people all the time, and like I told uh, Mugger last week, um, because she's also from Brooklyn. I'm like an honorary Brooklynite. I'm not from Brooklyn, but like everybody I've had on here, just about is from Brooklyn. It's like oh, Brooklyn right. is just Brooklyn is just everywhere. <laughs> like yeah. Brooklyn is is global. So shout out to Brooklyn and shout out to Bed Bed Stuy. What's your sign? I'm a Pisces. Oh wow! Nice. <laughs> yeah. Are you February or March? I'm March. The beginning of March. Yeah. But you know what? Y'all are naturally funny though. Like all the Pisces is not all, but like most of the Pisces I know are just like naturally funny. Like y'all yeah. just be having like just natural comedic timing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I think Lunell is a Pisces too. The comedian Lunell. I think she's a Pisces. I'm not sure. Probably. I think she is. Yeah. Um, she got her only fan. She she walling out. But anyway, um <laughs> I ain't really into the only fans. I don't blame you. I, I think it's too much for me. But here's the thing. I saw anybody that do it. I heard a lot of people making money off of it. I just They are. They they definitely are. But my thing is, and I I, I have this talk with a lot of people. Sex work is a means to an end. Like, it's not something that you're supposed to do forever and ever and ever and ever. It's like, you do it, you make your little money, and you get out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, it's not, I don't know. Anyway. Um, I mean, well, we got to have professionals in something. So. True. True. Because <laughs> how else are other of us going to learn if exactly. there are no so, professionals? I like that take. You know what? That's a good take. I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. You just try to perfect it. <laughs> yeah. I, I like that. I like that. Um, but I've seen your routines, though. You keep it raw and real. You know what I'm saying? And, and like I said earlier, this is safe space. But I mean, I keep it raw and real, too. Mm -hmm. And I want to know what you think about the artificial intelligence, the AI taking over. Computer and new technology is just is either going to be the end of us or the beginning of us. But too much too much technology is not like always good. You know, we have good technology and we have bad technology. And honestly, we even blessed to have this this much technology because when you think about it, we're actually supposed to be living off the land, and we don't even know how to do that. So it's like all of our food is being like processed in labs and stuff. And it's just like unhealthy stuff. And we don't know how to live off the land. Like if you told me how to go plant a tomato, I would honestly tell you I don't know how to do it. I don't. So it's like they're trying to take away farms and stuff so they could build like these factories to generate more food because the population is getting bigger. But it's like in a sense, we need to just as human beings, we need to just sit back and realize what is happening because even the air we're breathing is not safe, you know? And it's contaminating the water. So it's like, it's real out here. And the more information that I get, the more scary it is, yeah, you know? It it's like, you got to cope through life like this and it's still genuinely find happiness somewhere throughout all the chaos that's happening around you. Mm -hmm. So I'm for that's the new computers and stuff, right. but I'm also like, ah, will I go buy one? Probably not. I'm not yeah, I mean, I'm for me, lie. what freak what creeped me out was somebody used an AI generator to have Michael Jackson sing "I Feel It Coming" by the weekend, yeah, and it was the wildest I shit. I was like, "It's too much." But when you think about it, who's gonna have access to this stuff? People with money, like people with a lot of money, is gonna have access to it. So it's like, I mean, I guess enjoy your money. However you want to do it, but I, I ain't with it. I like my, I'm just a simple human being and I want it to be as simple as possible. I don't need any more difficult things, you know. Every five minutes, the iPhone is updating and it's like, bro, I barely use half the functions on the phone now. <laughs> like, this is it. Like, you know what? I want to go back to a time when maybe the most like complex phone was that little Nokia joint. You remember the little Nokia joint? Or oh, I would do the sidekick. I wouldn't mind a good little sidekick right now. Yeah, or the sidekick. Yes, yes. Because that was the thing. Like, phones were unique, just like us. 
Like everybody had a different phone back in that era, if you remember. Now, what do you have? You have even an Android or you have an iPhone. Like and this, then they always crashing, you know. And People exploding. don't talk to you about an Android. They right. judging you off your Android. I don't have a problem with Androids. I got an Android too um, up in here somewhere. I don't know. I'd love to go back to a simpler time though. It seemed like people did more then. Like, yeah. had more fun. Like, we told You don't have any more. There's no more social skills out here anymore. Everybody's just on the phone. And it's so advanced and it's crazy. It's crazy you can have a smartphone but still be dumb because you don't know how to use your smartphone. It's too much. One thing I'm going to tell y'all about. <laughs> One thing, you will not get an AI Chris David show, and I guarantee you, if it, if you do, it will not be the answer, okay? Y'all see what I did right there. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, some people, I do have, like, and I'm new, I do have some people, like, copying stuff that I do, and it's wild, Damo, because I'm a new guy. I'm like, why you want to copy me? But anyway. Yo, when, uh, that's another thing. Not everybody's created. So it's like when somebody sees you, a trendsetter at that point, you know, if somebody sees something you're doing, they're going to want to do it. And they might think they could do it better, but it's like, nah, I'm the original, you know? You can't do it. How you going to do it better than the original? Like, nobody's better than Jordan, but we have people that are close to it, right. you know? So it's like, you're the originator, and you can't never forget that. That's it. And as are you, because again, I watch your stuff. And your stuff had me like rolling the other day. I'm gonna get to that in a second, but <laughs> back to two, back to back to you being raw and real. I want you to tell us about one of the wildest dates you've ever been. The wildest dates? Um, well, I don't like dating off of like the dating site, the dating apps. But when I do, I feel like that's when I find the craziest girls. I remember I was, there was this one girl who was going out on a date and. Um, I'm I'm low budget, so I was like, yo, we can like go for a walk on the beach or whatever. So we went out to Coley Island, and we both had to pee. So we ended up peeing outside and stuff. But people started coming, so she needed to move the car. And sh the way Shorty jumped in the car and swung it, she ripped off her whole bumper. And I thought that was like the craziest thing ever because I was like trying to like, yo, slow down, slow down, chill. I think she was just so excited to have a car because she probably never had a car before. And she ripped her whole fucking bumper off that I had to like take my shoelace and tie it up so she can get home. So that's that's that. I mean, it, it was that was one of my craziest days that I had to like string tie somebody's bumper. Yes. A was not being careful with their vehicle. Bananas. That is. I was like, wow. But now I got to ask you this. Now, was that Big Booty Susan who, who you was on a date with? It's like, funny that you say Big Booty Judy because it's Big like, I did have a. Yeah, because I do remember uh, it was a girl in Maryland. I called her Big Booty Q. So that's probably where that came from in my oh, head at okay. the time when I said that was Dave. Because yeah, yeah, Q yeah. did have a big booty. She didn't like that. I called her Big Booty okay. Q, but it wasn't because I mean, you, you mentioned fight. Big Booty Susan, and and you mentioned Big Dick Larry, and I'm like, I know Big Dick Larry, <laughs> but he also Big Booty Larry. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not listen. I, it's it's, it's yeah. early. I'm not going to even get into that. But shout out the North. That's all I'm going to say. I'm gonna move on. <laughs> Dama, what's your family say? What'd your family say when they found out you wanted to do comedy? Honestly, I don't think they said anything. I yeah. cause so I grew up with my um, you know, I lost my parent at a young age. Like both my parents died when I was seven. Then I grew up with my grandmother until she passed away until I was fifteen. Then I moved in with my aunt who kicked me out. Well, I say she kicked me out because she found somewhere else for me to live. And to me, I think that's kicking me out. You know, I was only eighteen. I didn't know what the fuck I wanted to do. I actually didn't start comedy until I was like in my late twenty eight. You know, so nobody really had any. Thing to say it was just like oh she's doing comedy and stuff like they think it's cool and whatever but i grew up with like grand aunts and stuff they don't come to shows like my cousins and stuff they think it's cool they think i'm funny or whatever and they'll support me as much as they can but nobody really is like oh my gosh she's doing comedy yeah like type shit 
I got one cousin that's a police officer that I hate that he's a police officer and he supports me as much as he can. He's like probably one of my number one supporters. Then I have my cousin who's also my god sister. She supports me a lot and she's an artist. So it's like, I, when it comes to family, I don't feel no jealousy. I'm not gonna lie. If anything, it's people that I, it's people within the comedy community that sometimes it's, you might feel that. Cause the, the community is so fucking small, you know? And everybody's going after the same thing. And what people don't realize is like, bro, we all could have fans. We could all have this. We could have everything we want, but you gotta also understand that everybody got their lane. I'm not gonna be able to do what you do. And you're not gonna be able to do what I do. So it's like, if I find hate, I feel like it'll be more like the comedy community. And may, it might not even be hate, but just more of a dislike, gotcha. you know? Gotcha. And you know, I've spoken with, um, with with just people in different you know industries, and, and me and Joanna actually talked about that. And it's just like, why I love that she's doing this because this gets all of you all together, and and not only to show everybody that this is a thing that there are funny black women out here who are doing it, but that you all as sisters, y'all can have a sisterhood. And y'all can all get along yeah. and y'all can all share with the world y'all gift and y'all talent. I mean, you know, I think that's the important thing. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know, but you're always going to have those outliers. There's always going to be somebody who thinks that they're, you know, better than someone. And they're prima donna. They don't want to do a show with somebody. Or they don't want to be up on stage or, or share a marquee. You know, it's always yeah. going to be that. Always. Always. Gonna be. Right. Do you have a, like a pre-show ritual? Yo, know, I'm really, I'm quiet. Like I'm all, I'm in a corner somewhere or I might be pasting and just trying to get what I, I want to get out. I might be thinking about the crowd and feeling them or I'm thinking about what I want to come out with because I've been finding myself um, not having a really strong opener or closer. So I've been working on trying to make that better and people be fucking up my pronouns, excuse my French. So now I have to have, so now I have to come out with addressing my pronouns first. Cause I had a few people introduce me like, you're gonna love him. He's amazing. Yeah, Domo Jones. And I was just like, really? Okay, all right. Yeah, I can't tell. And I feel like my breasts were big enough that you could see it. You know, I don't, I don't understand. Like, I don't think men are just walking around here with boobs and a training bra. Like, what the fuck? It's okay to use they though. I feel like is I feel like that is the perfect time to use it. If right. you don't know what they are, you know, you sh you can use they them. I feel like that's the perfect time to use it. You're not. You shouldn't be. A, I don't. I mean, I personally wouldn't get offended if somebody called me they them, but I feel like I, I would appreciate it instead of them just assuming that I'm a heat. You know, I would rather I would rather them to say they them instead of assuming that I'm a he his. Yeah, that's just how I feel about them. I'm just quiet in my head, and anybody will tell you if I'm at a show and I'm over in a corner somewhere and I'm not joking or laughing. It's just I'm really in my head right now. You know, I might have my joke book out because I want to. I want to. In my like, I I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life at 18. I just all I knew was I wanted to be successful at something. And once I found this. Well, this act, comedy actually landed in my lap, you know, thank God. And now I just want to keep doing it, but I also want to be successful at it, you know? So I'm just constantly just trying to be better and successful at this craft. Especially when you watch your friends and they're doing amazing things. It's like, you want to do amazing things too. I might not be able to do exactly what they're doing, but I could be next to them in the other lane, you know? Who is Damo? outside of comedy, off stage. What do you like? Uh, right now I've been playing my Xbox a lot. So I like to play my Xbox, um, watch movies, or go out, chill. I like to dance when I can find a nice gay club to dance at. Uh, and just chill and just try to enjoy this life and do some activities. I, I, try, I try to hang out with my family as much as I can too on my free time. But um, just a regular ass person. I guess. Cool. I would say. That's what's up. Do you have a writing process at all? Like for your jokes, I heard you mention, you know, your joke book. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I would say I have a writing process. I've been looking back at my old jokes to try to bring them back. And it's just crazy when I look at myself, like the five years ago, Damo, to like the Damo now that I can take an old joke that I had five years ago and just make it so much better now. And I find that, yo, I've been doing like two or three of my old jokes that I had written from years ago. And I'm just like, yo, this shit is killing now. This is crazy. It was killing then, but it's even better now. Like, I just love it. You so know I'm what else that is? That's because you've lived. You've lived yeah. life. Yeah. And that pandemic kind of fucked me up too. Um, for, the, for the good and the, for the good and the, worse too because it's like when the world shut down for two years I wasn't like all the other comics you know going and doing shows at the park or on rooftops I was working you know I still have a day job now so it's like I'm doing comedy and still working at a day job some people say oh no you, you can't do both and it's like but why not you know all these jokes don't buy me stuff that I, I want like, I need money. Like, and I also like to shop. So, there's no way I'm going to quit my day job just to do comedy full time. Like, I would, I would have to have like a big gig lined up for me or some shit, but I can't just be out here walking around with no money in my pocket, bro. Like, that's just not me. <laughs> I heard, I hope y'all heard what, what, what Damo just said. Keep your day job. Because you literally could do, you could literally do both, bro. Like, yes. you can do both. And I don't like that people say you can't when you can is just find you a job that's going to be around put it get a job that's around your comedy you know don't do a job that's not around your comedy you know because it's like and it's funny that you that we even talking about this because netflix has a a show where it's this dude helping people get out of debt and is in it's calling it my rich life and after watching it i was like yo I'm doing everything that I want to do with my life. So it's like, my life is already rich, you know? And it, and it kind of makes sense because it's like, I got my day job and I'm doing my comedy. My my day job doesn't stop my comedy. Because when I need to go take off, I'll go talk to them. The people at the job already know what I'm doing. So it's no problem to get a day off. So it's like, I'm creating my world, which has become my rich life. Like So it's like, I'm I'm almost satisfied in a sense, which makes me happy. You know, so I'm happy with how it's going in my journey because everybody's journey is different. Like, and I think that's what's so dope about it. Yeah. And look at that. All you had to do was turn on Netflix to get confirmation of that. Even though you knew you were doing the right thing, there are people out here spending thousands of dollars on seminars to try to figure out what they're doing with their lives. So, YouTube exactly. is free. I mean, you YouTube is free. Is there? <laughs> yes. Netflix is however much Netflix is, but I think like ten, but no commercials. So it's like, right. yeah, I love no commercials. But you, you know, you, you figured it out. And, and the other thing is too, I tell people, you never know what may happen. If the pandemic didn't teach us anything, it's that we could get sick, you know, at the drop of a hat. Mm -hmm. With a day job, you have benefits. Mm -hmm. If you quit your day job just to do YouTube or podcasting or only fans or whatever, you ain't getting no benefits. You're not. You're not. When you gotta go to the doctor, you paying that full bill. That's but here's the thing: insurance is a gimmick too, though, because it's like I've been going to the doctor and I and I've been still getting some high bills that I'm just like, well, why do I have insurance? The only reason I'm having insurance is because you know, at the end of the year, when you file your taxes, if you don't have insurance, they tax you on not having insurance, and it's like, how that work? How work, I love bro. the direction this is going in because y'all are getting so much education. I love it. Y'all yeah. thought y'all was just going to turn this shit on and laugh. No, no. We're getting <laughs> to know the comedians. Because yeah. we real people at the end of the day that have exactly. Stuff. exactly. And that's another thing. Man. I ain't always fucking laughy, laughy. Sometimes I be serious because I got shit going on, man. Right. right. Yeah. And y'all have to understand that. Like, there are times when people turn off. Everybody is not going to be on. I know that's what some people are used to. Their celebrities and their, their singers and their faves being on all the time. But no, when you're a real human being, you have moods and you have moments. And you, yeah. and you change. You know? And y'all got to understand that. And I hope that y'all do. And I hope that if you're interested in pursuing any type of career like this, you keep your day job. Hold on to it. 
because it will afford you the luxuries that you want until you pop. Anyway, I, I don't want to go down that road because we about to go down another road. Tell us about the uh, the Black Women in Comedy Laugh Fest that you're going to be featured in. Oh, man, that, that's going to be great. It's my fourth year. I'm, like, really excited for it. The last three years were dope, too. Like, Joanna is doing her thing, and I love to be a part of it and support my Black women. Also, we need platforms like this. You know, yeah, we have some shows that you'll see an old women's lineup, and then dudes will still try to get on. And it's like, but bro, you see it's an old woman's lineup. So I look forward to this because nothing against men. I have no problem with them. It's just when you see an old men's flyer and you don't see a woman on it, it's like, really? So y'all don't have a funny woman. Y'all don't know any funny women out here, but y'all out here fucking pussy, right? So make that make sense to me. So like, I definitely looking forward to this. Um, festival every year because like i meet people from all over you know and i think that's what's so dope about it and then it's in the it's in the best city you could ask for new york city bro like it don't get no better than that you know so it's like yeah i'm happy to be home for like a week doing shows and meeting new people networking and just creating new friends you know and making the comedy the women's comedy scene bigger. It, it needs to grow, and a lot of women are doing comedy now because they are funny. You know, they have a voice. They have something to talk about. They could be relatable, just like men. So I don't even understand how some people even think men are funnier than women. I remember, like, yo, I had a dude um, DM me talking about, oh, I usually don't watch female comedians, but you actually have some good content. And I was like, what? What backhand compliment is this, bro? I, I didn't, it, 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 that didn't sit well with me, but I was just like, he could have just said, yo. I, 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 I was just, he was just better off saying, yo, good stuff. You know, I enjoyed it. But to give me all that extra stuff is like, you trying to psych me out and get in my head. But nah, this comedy, this festival is well needed. And I look forward to doing it. Um, this year and the many years to come. So I'm very excited for it. Listen, if you're jonesing for more Damo, the Black Women in Comedy Laugh Fest starts Wednesday, June 14th and runs through Sunday, June 18th. That's Father's Day this year. So take that out to see our new friend, Damo Jones, as well as Mugger from last week's show and all of the many funny sisters on the lineup. Go to BWICLaughFest.com for tickets and don't drag your feet because y'all know what I say every show. B is in black, W is in women, in C is in comedy, laugh, L-A-F-F, that's all one word, dot com. Make sure you have three Fs, not two. Listen, Damo is doing big things out here in these comedy streets. She got 99 problems, but telling jokes ain't one. So <laughs> go open up a new tab and get those tickets. We're going to be in Harlem, in Brooklyn. So you got, they got options, man. Plenty. They got options. The only borough we're not going to be in is Queens and, and Staten Island. Got time to get on the ferry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we just... Ain't nobody got time for the ferry. Ain't nobody got time to be uh, sitting on traffic on the Verrazano. Um, Yo, that's a fact. That's, and, and listen, don't be on the lower level of that shit. I know. I like being on high level. It's funny. Somebody was like, when you when you drive on a bridge, which one do you want to be on? I'll be like, yeah, I want to be on the high just in case of the bridge fall, I'm falling on top of them. <laughs> and that's a stupid-ass concept. Who like, even thinks about that, I though? Can't <laughs> oh, my God. Who even <laughs> thinks about that? Like, I, see, only you. I love it, though. I love it because that's, that's some shit I would think about. I'd be like, man, I don't want this shit falling off. Like, and all the cars fall. Like, it's, it's just a whole clusterfuck. See, that's why, you know, human race is so dope. Because it's like, they actually build bridges. Like, we build bridges. Like, that, I think that is so sick that people hundreds of years ago built bridges. Like, that's crazy. And it's like, well, we could do this. That's why, you know, it's an edible on... Or what I said, inedible. Inevitable. But you know what I mean, guys. I know what you meant. Yeah. 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 I know what you meant. I got you. <laughs> so it's like, we yeah. literally can do anything. And that's why technology is so far advanced as it is, you know? So. 
Because we just got to keep going. And then we, in America and all these other continents, you know, the income, the income, what's the fucking word? Competition with each other and stuff. So instead of just coming together, we actually live peacefully if they really wanted to. Listen, we're going to let them figure that out. I want y'all to come together and come to Black Women in Comedy Laugh Fest. It's a fact. Pull up. To see our new friend right here, Damo, Damo Jones. What do you want people to take away from your shows? Honestly, I just enjoy doing it. I enjoy being an entertainer and talking and having fun on stage. I feel like this is, I don't know if it's my calling, but I do feel like ever since I started doing it, it's like something I can't stop doing. So I, I would just say, if anything, I just want to entertain and have fun because every night is a different group of people and I just want us to have fun and kick it and just have a good time and enjoy this life that we have, you know, because we be here for the moment. So let's enjoy it. Exactly. I want you to tell everyone how they can get in touch with you. Oh, you can find me on the gram at Town of Jones. I don't really do Twitter, but that's my tag for Twitter too, Town of Jones. Um, yeah, that's where you can find me. All right. Town of Jones, all one word on IG. T is in today. O is in open. W as in your wallet. And is in now. O. J's in jokes. O is in oh shit, Domo funny as hell. Oh. Okay, and is yo. in nigga, get them tickets. E is in everyone invited. S is in stand up girls NYC. And B is respectful. In Damo's DMs, as you would at the bank trying to get a PPP loan. <laughs> yeah. Listen, PPP. I gotta let him know. We gotta let him know. Yo, oh, God. we gotta let him know. What's the wildest thing though that you've seen while you was up on stage out in the crowd? Yo, I don't remember what joke it was that I said, but this dude just started making out with his girl. And I was like, I don't think that joke called for making out with your girl. I thought that was good. I, I feel like I don't really see too many weird stuff. But that one, I, re I remember that one. I just don't remember the joke I did at the time. Because I it threw me off. I was like, I'm doing a show here. Fuck, take, wow. If you want to, like, make out or something, you know, take that shit outside. I don't know. Was that the, did you have, like, the sex magic? The, the Spanish fly up in the joke or something? I don't know. Like... They just caught a love bug or something right there. Yeah. Like, all right, my guy, like, I don't know. I probably did my single joke, and he was like, probably was like, yeah, I ain't single. And just started kissing me. <laughs> that shit was weird. That was weird. Or another, it was, this wasn't crazy, but I remember seeing, it was this dude sleeping through everybody's set, and then when I got up and I was talking, then he wanted to say something out of the sideline. I was like, oh, you up now? He was sleeping through everybody's shit. And I thought that shit was so funny that you woke up from your nap to talk during my set, but you would sleep through everybody else's. I thought that shit was crazy too. Wow. Man. That, that, how you sleep through whole anyway? I don't who sleeps through a comedy show. It's crazy because it's like you hear you're there for the laughter. And I know the hey. how do you sleep during other people laughing? I don't know, man. I have seen it done. Yeah, I don't know if that was tired or, or some other stuff, but um, some other shit that I don't condone. But anyway, listen, listen, Domo. I research all I guess, and I saw a post on your IG because I, you know, I looked up your IG. I saw a post on your IG, and it was from years ago, and it was a fortune from a fortune cookie, and it was just laying on the ground. Now, before I ask you the Powerball numbers that was on the back, oh, I don't know. I want you. Oh, oh my you, god! I know what fortune you, cookie you're talking about because I don't have that many posts. Right, but. right, right. But I want you to tell everybody what that fortune said and what it meant to you and why you you had that up there. I uh, it's funny because I didn't. I actually didn't open that fortune cookie. Right. I actually found that um when I used to live out in Norristown, I was staying in somebody's um. I guess their basement, their finished basement, mm -hmm. and I remember going to the garage. And then I found this, the, the ability to find your silly, find the silly and the serious will take you far. 
And I'm always like, because I've been through so much, I'm always, I'm always like, how do I hold this happiness and funniness together? Because I don't think anybody else that would have been able to do what I'm doing, you know, and just coping through life and finding the funny in it. Because it's like I lost my parents at a young age and I even have a joke about it. And I'm like, how am I able to do this? So it's like, I've, I've realized throughout my whole time, like since I was freaking seven until now, I'm always finding the funny in something just to lighten up that mood. And like, just letting myself know like, yo, it's going to be all right. Because if I could laugh at it, that means it's not that serious. And I found the funny in it and I can move forward. I don't want to be dwelling or crying over something for too long when there's more stuff out here to do. It's like, it's more life out here to live than to be sitting in the corner crying over all my losses or anything. And when I've seen that on the uh, the garage floor, I was like, yo, that's crazy. Cause this is literally how I feel. Like I have the ability to find the silly and shit and just move forward from it. I mean, you literally just did that with me when we were talking about the Verrazano. Yeah. I mean, cause it's horrible. Like that's a Final Destination type shit. Yeah, but you made me laugh. So I, I really do like that quote, and that's why it's, uh, it's probably not going to go off my Instagram page because I found that by accident. I didn't open that fortune. That was somebody else's fortune that they left on the garage floor. Yeah, well, that's because it wasn't for them. It was for you. Yeah, it was for you to find and for you to see. I wish I would have took the lot on numbers. I should have played them. <laughs> I would have well, hit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. See? But it was I for you. I thought that was a good fortune to find. Yeah, it was meant for you. It was meant for you. Um, before we get out of here, though, I'd like to ask all my guests this. Um, if you had a time machine, what would you go back and tell yourself in the past? Uh, if I had a time machine, you know, everything going to be okay. Just keep pushing forward to it. And just keep going, cause you're gonna be all right. Like I didn't know I, this is where I was gonna be. I didn't. I didn't know this is not like the life I really mapped out. Cause I, like I said, I I was looking for something to be successful at, and this is what it is. So I, I thought I would just tell myself, keep going, keep pushing, and you gonna find something. And now if I could change anything, I'd change my parents dying. If I had a time machine, them niggas died from AIDS in the in the 90s, you know, when AIDS was like killing niggas off. Right. So, yeah. So that's the only thing. I, I go back and tell the niggas, wrap it up. <laughs> and that's about it. But... Finding the silly <laughs> in the series. Listen, y'all better go get them tickets to see this comedy show, because she's she gonna have you in stitches. Like, for real, for real. <laughs> like, I want to bust out laughing, but I don't want to, like, blow out my mic and my speakers and shit. But... <laughs> Listen, what do you have going on next? Next? Uh, yeah. I think, honestly, the only thing I have that I'm looking forward to right now for June is the Black Women's Comedy Festival. And then at the end of June, I'm going to be in New Orleans for the Black Girls Giggle Comedy Festival. And that's cool. I am going to be at City Winery on the 24th of June. So June is looking real... Real booked up right now. Um, I'll be at the city. June is looking there. abundant. June is looking abundant. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward like to abundant. both these uh, these festivals that are going on. Because the one that's in New Orleans is from the 29th of June to July 2nd. And what's dope about that one is that's it's going to be during Fest. the yes. I know. I've never been to New Orleans. I've never been to... Uh, I got a story for I'm you not- when we wrap this about New Orleans. I got a story for you. <laughs> Let me know, because, yo. It's a dope place. dope place. It's a dope place. It's expensive, but it's fun. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And they let you take your, you buy your drink at a bar and then walk into the street with it. I'm like, oh, yo, yeah. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, do, you can do all of that. You can do all of that there. You can do it all so, there. So uh, I'm looking forward yeah. to that in my week in New York. Um, yes. For June. June's so nice. I, I love it. Everybody. Get to know her. This is Damo Jones, not Domo Jones. Damo. And thank you for coming and keeping it up with us. You know you got to come back again because I had a good time with you. 
I had a really good time with you. Black Women in Comedy Laugh Fest runs June 14th through June 18th. Visit BWICLAFFFest.com. Before we go, I must again thank both our special guest, Damo Jones, as well as last week's guest, Mugger, for gracing us with their presence and partaking in my shenanigans. Also, I got to thank One Funny Sister Entertainment, Ms. Shonda Daniels, and Mrs. Holly Harper. Shout out to Glow Butler, Tony Bird, Ayana Duki, Ashima Franklin, Carrie Burt, Donna Lewis, D-Lo, and Mika Moe. Funny Fifi, Funny as a Mother and Friends. All of the comedians, venues, sponsors, and uh, everybody participating in the Black Women in Comedy Laugh Fest. Black comedians and all funny Black women everywhere. Thank you for making us laugh, even when shit wasn't funny. We love you for loving us with laughter. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank the Joanna and Briley, CEO and founder of the Black Women in Comedy Laugh Fest, for partnering with The Chris David Show. You are indeed one funny sister. Love you all my lifetime. But most of all, thank you for supporting The Chris David Show. Now, next week's show. Anyway. Be sure to tell your friends, tell your mama, tell your daddy, tell your baby daddy, tell your boyfriend, tell your sister, tell your cat, tell your daughter, tell your doctor. Tell Big Booty Susan and Big Dick Larry. So follow us on Instagram at Chris David TV. Follow our show at the Chris David Show on Instagram and YouTube. And visit BWICLaughFest.com to purchase your tickets for the Black Women in Comedy Laugh Fest. Also visit ChrisDavidShow.com. There you'll find this in every episode as well as everything you need to know about the show. Now take care. Be kind, get them tickets, and laugh, motherfucker. Be well. This is Donald Jones. I got 99 problems. Telling jokes ain't one. Come see me at the Black Woman in Comedy Laugh Fest. Get your tickets at BWICLaughFest.com. Hope to see you there.